for the first time in our human existence any book, being it a novel, poetry, a history book or a philosophical work, can be produced by an AI robot. So knowledge from now on will not be solely created by humans, but also by machines. And I'm not sure if that is only a good thing. In this episode, we look at four cases that illustrate how the book and publishing industry will be disrupted by artificial intelligent robots or AI chatbots. And no, this is not fiction. Welcome back to Bold Books and Bones. Recently, I learned, as probably many of you did, about OpenAI. This is the company that created ChatGPT, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. In short, it is an artificial intelligence chatbot. So what do we need to know about this bot? First of all, everyone can access OpenAI via a normal web browser. You type in a question, and you get an answer. It is that easy. What I thought till that point was that this is just a much more improved search engine, something like a Google to the next level or so. But I could not have been more wrong. What this is, is generative artificial intelligence. Meaning instead of only scanning millions of websites to try and find the answer to your question, it also creates new content. So, from now on, any knowledge in the form of an essay, a research report, poetry, novels and even love letters are not necessarily created by humans anymore. But they also will be created by applications that use generative artificial intelligence. And that has far-reaching consequences for our humankind and for the book and publishing industry in particular. Let's look at case number one. Let's say I have a so-called writer's block. I just can't think of something to write because I experience some kind of creative slowdown. Now, let's say I'm also a journalist and I run a weekly blog and I need to write something about the impact of climate change on the energy industry. And all that in about 500 words. So from now on, we can ask an AI chatbot to do this for us. Et voilà. Here we see how it writes a blog post on the requested topic. Let's maybe read the first few lines from the top. The world is facing a global energy crisis and climate change is one of the major factors driving it. Climate change is causing a shift in the way energy is produced and consumed. And so on. The good news is that anyone with writer's block could use this generated content as an inspiration source to unblock their writer's block. They could do their own research based upon the suggested narrative by the AI chatbot and they could then create their own original text. Or anyone could just copy-paste the whole text and claim it was theirs. So, as always, there is potentially a serious dark side to this new technology. Maybe this first case did not impress you yet. And therefore, let's go to case two. If this one does not impress you, then I don't know what will. Here is case two. What if I want to emulate the style of another writer? Let's say I want to write a mystery story and I want to write it in the style of my favorite mystery novel, which is called The Name of the Rose, written by Umberto Eco. Now here is my question to OpenAI. Write me the opening scene of a mystery story in the style of the name of the rose. 
Now what we see here is not bad at all. If you know this novel, you will for sure immediately recognize the context and the mood of the story. But watch what happens now. If I delete the answer to this question and I resend the same question, then a new answer emerges. I repeated this several times and each one of the answers was quite intriguing because they brought a different angle to the opening of the story. Next, I changed the question slightly and I added Make Leven, the owner of Bold Books and Bones, the main character of the story. And then this came out. And I read with you Leven, the aged owner of Bold Books and Bones, stepped back with a reverent smile as he examined the newest acquisition to his collection. It was a rare first edition of a forbidden religious sacred text that he had obtained from an anonymous seller. The book had an aura of mystery to it, with its ancient paper and delicate gold lettering that had barely been touched by time. As Leven continued to marvel at the book, his thoughts began to drift to the young bibliophile known as Bones, who had made himself a regular at Bold Books and Bones. Bones was a thin, pale figure in his early twenties with an unusual keen interest in the world's most banned or forgotten books. He always asked Leven questions about them with an intensity that suggested he was somehow connected to their contents. And so on. I can only say, oh my god. Because by asking to put me in the opening scene, the AI bot put the story immediately in the 21st century, while in the opening scenes that it previously generated, the story took place centuries ago, just like in the original story by Umberto Eco. But I'm surprised and quite amazed by the introduction of the new character that the AI bot calls Bones a person with whom I allegedly have conversations about mysterious books. I find this part quite creative and this version of the opening scene even inspired me for something else that I'm currently working on. But this was generated by an AI bot. Now this might have far-reaching consequences because it could mean that a publishing house could decide not to ask and pay authors to write a book. Instead, they could ask OpenAI or any other AI robot to write a book in the style of what is, let's say, trending on TikTok at the moment. For example, they could say, okay, vampire novels for teenagers are trending, AI bot write me such a story and make it in three volumes. These books would then be ready in no time and would be produced at a very low cost. Now, another thing I noticed is that none of these generated texts come with any reference or source material. So again, a potential serious disruption of the book and publishing industry, because what about copyright? Or how can we verify the truthness of the text in case that a text is not supposed to be fiction? Let's turn now to case number three. What about I want to write a love letter to my wife who is Chinese? And I mention also to OpenAI that I am European. Let's see how OpenAI handles this. I find it interesting how it integrates this difference in culture into the love letter. We can read here, I'm so thankful for all the time we've spent together discovering each other and our cultures. Next I ask the same question and add, make it rhyme. And in no time the AI bot produces a love letter that rhymes. So 
This means that we don't need to be able to express our emotions in writing because OpenAI can do this for us. Or we are not able to write poetry or we are not creative in this way at all and yet an AI bot could create this content for us and again, in the worst case, someone could claim it to be their own words. So does this mean that soon we will read poetry about love and deep human experiences that are written by a machine that is not at all able to experience love and is not at all capable of having any deep human experiences? What will be the value of these words? Will we cherish them because of their beauty or will we call it fake because these words were not coming from the depths of a human soul? From all this, could we state that AI chatbots are able to be creative? I don't know the answer to that question yet. Let me know what you think in the comment section underneath. And share what you think will be the biggest impact of generative artificial intelligence on the book and publishing industry. And if you like this content, then support my channel by subscribing and pressing that like button. This helps a human to continue to create content for you. Let's go now to case number four. How accurate is an AI chatbot? Now we know that OpenAI creates content based upon trained content from the web. Also, we can read here that our default model's training data cuts off in 2021, so they may not have knowledge of current events. Meaning that sometimes the AI bot might not be accurate or even wrong. Let's test this based upon a question about something that is very specific and that is definitely not widely known. Remember that episode I made about a 1000 year old manuscript written in Syriac by Michael the Great? That is something not many people know about. So let's ask about this manuscript. Here we go. Can you tell me why NASA was interested in reading a 1,000-year-old manuscript written in Syriac by Michael the Great? Here is the answer. So let's read it quickly. NASA was interested in reading the 1,000-year-old manuscript written in Syriac by Michael the Great because the manuscript contains ancient astronomical records and observations of stars, planets and comets that could provide insights into the history of our solar system. The manuscript is thought to be one of the oldest records of its kind and its content may help scientists better understand the evolution of our solar system. Okay, there is nothing wrong with this answer, but it is quite general. I next tweaked the question several times a bit and at other times I reused exactly the same question to generate new answers. And here the chatbot of OpenAI goes sometimes in a wrong direction. For example, I asked to elaborate on the fact that Michael the Great wrote about a time when the earth was dark. And this AI chatbot seems to confuse the event of a dark earth with a period that we call the Dark Ages. So, one more try. I do my best to be more precise in what I want to know. And I write this time, please specifically focus on the event that Michael the Great mentions about the earth that was dark for many months. Let's read the answer now. In the 1,000-year-old manuscript written in Syriac by the author Michael the Great, he mentions an event that occurred in the year 904 CE. He writes that there was total darkness on the earth for many months. This event was so significant that it made NASA scientists take a closer look at the text. They believe that this event could have been caused by either an asteroid impact a gamma ray burst or a super volcanic eruption and so on. Well, this is the answer I was looking for. That is pretty accurate. Now, 
What is funny in a weird way is that the more I interacted with OpenAI, the more I forgot that it is not a human. You might have noticed that, for example, I used the word please in my question as if I would be talking to a human. So again, case one illustrates that an AI bot can be very helpful, for example, to unblock your writer's block. Case two illustrates that maybe soon we will find books written by bots and not by human authors. Case three illustrates that maybe AI is capable of producing creative content, like for example poetry. And case four illustrates that when you ask the right question, AI seems to find answers to questions about very specific events that not many people know about. But what will happen next? These generative AI chatbots will continue to evolve and they will do so in a very fast way. So they will get smarter and smarter every day. I think that the impact it will have on us humans and on how we create and distribute knowledge cannot be underestimated. This is particularly true for the book and publishing industry because something significant has happened here. Since the 15th century, with the invention of the printing press with movable type, information reproduction and distribution has accelerated exponentially. Then, centuries later, the internet, and more specifically, the social media applications, has brought us to the maximum speed of how a vast variety of information can be spread and distributed to anyone on the planet with a smartphone. But this generative artificial intelligence is of a different category. It is a completely different animal. Because it is not only about the production and distribution of information, but now we enter an era where machines create content that will be hard to distinguish from content created by humans. We could and maybe should ask all kinds of questions here. What will this bring us in terms of copyright, originality of thought, creativity, or in terms of moral responsibility for the content that is created? And linked to this, what does it mean for the truthness and accuracy of information? We saw in the recent years that fake news and social media can be a dangerous combination that can even disrupt our democracies. So knowing what we know now, I think we are only scratching the surface of what generative artificial intelligence will bring to our human societies. Hopefully it will bring more good stuff than bad stuff. Let me know what you think about all this. Am I on the wrong track with my thinking? Or would you like to share other thoughts about this subject? Then please do so in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next episode. Meanwhile, stay curious and stay free. Bye for now.